What's up, Pokemon trainers, Pokemon breeders, and Pokemon masters alike? It's your host of the most griever as always, bringing you guys the second part of our Pokemon Red Gen Log Challenge, our overall part two of our Gen Log Challenge. For those of you who don't know what is a Gen Log Challenge, be sure to check out the first part of this video series because I go in depth for about you know seven and ten minutes uh, into uh, exactly what a Gen Log is and how this is going to work. But suffice to say, all the information should be over somewhere here in this vicinity. Uh, so to summarize it pretty quickly, a Genlock is pretty much uh, multiple Nuzlocks all tied into one. A super umbrella Nuzlock, if you will. Uh, so you go through multiple core series games, trying to use the same Pokemon, the Hall of Famers, the, you know, the winners, as you continue on your quest to just keep winning game after game after game, beating Elite Four after Elite Four after Elite Four, champion after champion after champion, and you continually try to do that and go as far as you can. Not just one Nuzlocke, but multiple Nuzlocke with the same rule set across multiple games. That's pretty much summarizes the Genlock Challenge. This is part two, of course, uh, and if you want more information, as I already said, check out the beginning of the part one of this video series. Without further ado, let's just jump into part two. We started with Pokemon Red version. Let's see how far we get in this part. All right, so first things first, we already beat Erica, as far as I'm aware here. We got the Poke Flute and stuff, and now we're trying to wake up the Snorlax and get ourselves a Snorlax on this route. Snorlax, of course, in a hugely viable Pokemon. The further on in the Core Series games we get, the better Snorlax will be. So utilizing a Snorlax would be ideal. Completely ideal to catch ourselves a Snorlax. Though very difficult back then in this uh, run of the game. So we're going to start off with uh, Copper and try a Thunderbolt. See what our special can do. And it does over half health to Snorlax right out of the gate. That is probably not the best thing because now we can't use a second Thunderbolt. We go for a Thunder Wave, hoping that he's going to be fully paralyzed before he can use Rest. No, no such luck. No such luck whatsoever, and he uses Rest. Now, of course, in this game, I believe it's only two turns of sleep before he wakes up. So, he used Rest, he fell asleep, we used Thunderbolt, he's fast asleep, he's going to wake up the second turn. So, he only... Uh, rest sort of changed now and again between different versions of the game and stuff like that but back then I believe it was only the the one full turn you know so to speak starts using amnesia to raise the uh, special which is sort of good sort of not for us if only we can get this thing paralyzed long enough to not use once again rest fell asleep because we really are gonna need the status ailment for this thing to stay in a goddamn pokeball or a great ball uh, so now we go for the Thunderbolt, but of course he's already utilized a uh, Amnesia once or twice already, so at least once, and now as you can tell, Thunderbolt does a lot less. We go for the Swift, he wakes up of course, we go for another Swift, and we get him down to a reasonable amount, another Headbutt though, and I really don't want to take the risk with uh, Copper anymore, Copper is just uh, so vital to our team, that kind of idea, so... Boom, we jump into Apollo, and Apollo does his thing by, what, what do we end up doing? Oh, we just end up saying, screw it and throw a great ball, and barely anything, barely anything. Another Amnesia, while well, we've got him down to the, you know, probably yellow, not quite red, might as well just keep lobbing great balls at him, because once again, the, you could argue we're wasting great balls, but once Snorlax would be such a huge addition to this team. Don't know who I would give up for him, but getting a Snorlax would be just incredible. So we go for the Mega Punch while he's fast asleep using Rest. Two Mega Punches should put him up, and then of course we don't hit two Mega Punches in a row, and we take a Headbutt. So really unfortunate there. We can survive another Headbutt, so we go for a Mega Punch. Finally connect. A third one would probably take him out, so I'm scared of using it so instead I go for the Leer to sort of lower his defense he can raise his special which includes special attack and special defense but it obviously cannot uh, do anything for his defense so if we keep lowering his defense as we switch out to new Pokemon our physical attacks will be worth a lot more uh, I'm not sure who we switch into here once again this is a highlight reel that I haven't watched in a while And we go into our Doug Trio Triumvir. Now Triumvir takes a heavy hit. He can't survive more than one headbutt. I'm not willing to sack him. So uh, Radigan jumps in. Radigan. He takes a headbutt. And I'm thinking, alright, he's definitely going to go if... 
if I go for something, he's definitely going to rest soon. So I decide to go for the Great Ball. He goes for the Amnesia, and I'm like, alright, good, good, good. So he's going to Amnesia, it's not going to work, then he's going to go for the rest, right? Still going for Amnesia, no problem. We're just chucking these Great Balls at him, hoping for the best. I'm worried with the Leers that we're going to do too much. And he does end up finally going for the rest, so... You know, my, my luck sort of paid off in that regard. At this point now, I feel good using uh, Hyper Fang. But I'm still concerned that if I get a crit on Hyper Fang with the Leers, it's going to do too much damage. So I go for the Quick Attack instead. The Quick Attacks, of course, are doing about not quite a third, but almost a third. One more Quick Attack, and it'll be right down to the red for sure. Look at that. Look at that. Just, just enough. So it was better than using the Hyper Fang. Now we get a chance with a Great Ball. Still have had zero luck with our Great Balls thus far. And he goes for a rest again. And I'm thinking, alright. Well, then we're back to what we were doing before. But I think this is where I decide, you know, he can probably survive one Hyper Fang. And he does. It does over half health. Thankfully, it wasn't a critical. And then we go for a, uh, I believe, a Quick Attack here. Just to get him right back down to that red. We, I really wanted to throw a Pokeball at that point. Because, of course, he's going to wake up. He only gets one turn of sleep. Rest is kind of broken in the original gen. It doesn't work. We really need to get some hacks on him. And boom! What does he finally do? He goes for a headbutt. And I was getting a little too cocky. And shit, we lost Radigan. We lost our Raticate. Huge. It's our first loss. And as you can tell, then my cursor moving around and stuff. I pause and I'm probably going at the time. Going... Fuck! You know, like, what the fuck? How was I so stupid? You know, our first loss is just my own uh, cockiness and my own stupidity. There was no hacks involved. There was nothing like that. I stayed in knowing that one headbutt would kill me. Knowing one headbutt would kill me, I stayed in for like 12 turns. And at this point, as you can see, I have given up. I killed the Snorlax because at this point I'm not willing to lose anybody else. It's understandable, I guess you could argue. It is, uh, at least for me, it was understandable at the time. I was frustrated. I just lost our first Pokemon to stupidity, and I wasn't willing to lose a second one to some stupid crit or something like that. That Snorlax was not giving me an inch, and I said, I'm just done wasting Great Balls on him and stuff. So, uh, But as you guys can tell, we also managed to get ourselves Evolve uh, and Caligon into a Charizard. That's fantastic. Here we are in the Safari Zone. We made it to Future City, and we are in the Safari Zone. This is where, uh, I also count, by the way, four areas, uh, all four areas where they have different Pokemon, each area you have one shot at your first encounter. That's the way I treat the Safari Zone in these games, and lo and behold, we caught ourselves a Rhyhorn. I believe we actually, uh, screwed up, in this run, we screwed up catching a Rhyhorn right out of the gate, but then in the next area, we ended up getting a Rhyhorn. So, absolutely fantastic. I'm not sure which area was which. I think we only catch one Pokemon in the whole of the Safari Zone. We get uh, Heracles, a uh, Rhyhorn, which is fantastic. Rhyhorn is so cool. I love Rhydon. Rhydon is one of my favorite Pokemon. Hate what they did to him in Gen 4. Uh, but yeah, so we, we do end up getting ourselves Heracles here. Um, and I clearly paused it there for some weird reason. Anyways, it's a highlight reel. The editing's going to be a little choppy here and, here and again. And we're still in the Safari Zone. We must have caught... Oh, that's right! We end up... Uh, I'll, spoiler alert. We do end up catching a level 33 Nidorino after painstakingly not getting ourselves a, uh, a Nidoran, male or female, throughout the game. You know, throughout uh, before Mount Moon and all that fun jazz. Where do we find one in the Safari Zone already at high level? Uh, you know, just a few levels below our current team. Your Rhyhorn needs a little more work, being only level 25. And with a really bad move pool. But Nidorino, we get him. Call him Nido Boy after our team, of course. The Dallas Nido Boys. Uh, when I did play competitively for all of five minutes and sucked. Uh, so I did create a, uh, uh, a mock team. The Dallas Nido Boys. Uh, and here we go. We use a Moonstone just right out of the gate. Because there's no reason not to at level 33. There's nothing Nidorino's going to learn that's uh, really you know, worth waiting for, and the stat increase is just there, we get ourselves a Needle King. Needle Boy evolves into a Needle King, no big deal. This is where we're looking at the type differential, right? We have a Doug Trio, we have a Rhyhorn, and we have Needle King. Three ground types. Three. And a Charizard. Four of our uh, six Pokemon are weak to water types. That's not good. That's not good at all. Not only do we have no switch into real water types, 
other than copper, um, then we just have a profound weakness against uh, against water types here. So I'm thinking, all right, we're gonna have to give up somebody. I'm not sure who yet, but then I say, you know what? We gotta capture ourselves a few water types and then then make a decision. Make a decision by around Cinnabar or so. Uh, make ourselves a decision. We do a few gems with this team because this team is solid and I don't want to screw with that. But eventually I want diversity. I want choice going, especially not so much for the gym leaders because Blaine and Giovanni are relatively easy, but the Elite Four. Like Needle King can learn Surf and stuff and I'm pretty sure I teach him Surf and a few other TMs, but that's not the point. The point is our tight weakness. We have an obvious weakness to water uh, on this team. As much of a great team, a powerhouse team that it is, it's not going to uh, it's not going to be great. So we end up uh, super rotting and catching ourselves a Krabby. I believe we named the Krabby Sushi. Yeah, we named the Krabby Sushi. Uh, so there's one option. is a Kingler. Now, Kingler's not so great in this game. Of course, a lot of Pokemon get more viable as the core series games go on. But in this particular instance, I love Kingler, so I'm willing to use him, you know? Uh, so I think that Kingler's a great addition. We end up using Super Rod on Cycling Road because we didn't uh, go into the grass on Cycling Road. And back then, apparently in the newer games or, or the remakes, you can't actually fish on Cycling Road. I don't think I ever tried in Fire Red Leaf Green, but apparently you can't. Anyways, what did we run into though? A Tentacle. And this is going to be a bit of a problem going forward because all our roots, of course, we run into Tentacles and Tentacruels throughout. So it, it really sucks for us because now we have no other options. Uh, I think there was a chance for Goldeen and Shelder potentially in this in this water. I'm not sure one or both, but uh, we end up getting not only with a Super Rod a level five Tentacool, who is just giving us grief and it's just Tentac Tentacool like Tentacruel is not a is a very good defensive Pokemon. So I'm not against using a Tentacruel. It's just like. Out of all the versatility, all, all the different options we could have got by using a fishing rod, we end up with a tentacle. So we end up switching out to copper using the thunder wave. Uh, we take the acid to the face, but now he's at least parrot at level five. A couple of great balls and some pokeballs should, you know, we, we, we should be good. We should be good. And apparently just does not want to get into the damn Pokeball. Granted, we have no attacks. There's no false swipe back then. There's nothing like that. So we just have to keep lobbing balls at this thing. And at this late stage in the game, I'm good with using up pretty much all our all our Pokeballs and all our Great Balls and stuff. Because we have very few options left. Realistically speaking, what do we have? We have outside Victory Road. We have Victory Road. We have Seafoam Islands. We have Pokemon Mansion. We've already been through this fire zone and stuff. That's pretty much it. We only have, you know, four or five spots, half a dozen spots at best, where anything viable that we're going to catch. Uh, we also call the tentacle Calamari. I think Calamari. I was going to call him Kilamari after uh, Street Sharks, but uh, I thought about it too late, you know. And I don't believe we actually end up using uh, Tentacruel because we catch something else here. Right, we catch a Star You here, and I'm thinking, oh boy, Starmie? Let's go. Starmie is a top tier Pokemon, not just in competitive, but just a top tier Pokemon in the original games and going forward into all games. Starmie is a is a master of disaster. Even more so than I would argue uh, Tentacruel. Probably one of the best water type Pokemon right up there with Lapras is, and, and Gyarados would be a Starmie, 100%. So we end up... Uh, going after this Starmie that we uh, we fish for because we know there's no point in jumping in surfing because we're just going to run into a tentacle. So we decided to surf here right below Fuchsia. I don't think we did that for Palatine. We might have done that for Palatine. I'm not 100% sure for the extra root. Uh, or we went into the grass and caught nothing where there's Tengalas and stuff like that. I'm not 100% sure. See, I don't show my failures, by the way. I thought about it, but it extended the video too much when I, when I was editing this before. So we do end up catching the star you however, but yeah, I I thought about showing all the failures and stuff like that. I just said no, no, th th there's no real point in showing all the failed catches alongside of all the all the catches because the catches a lot of these Pokémon we don't end up actually ever using. And you know, the videos are long enough. This is supposed to be a highlight reel. I showcase the entire gym battles 
you know, and all the rifle battles and the Elite Four and stuff. I mean, these videos overall, probably each game is going to take at least two, two to three hours to cover each run, each leg of the Genlock. I, I thought that was plenty. I think it's absolutely plenty. And here we're in Silphco. So we skip, first time for everything, I decide to skip Fuchsia. I forget why I did this. I think I wanted to beat Sabrina first because Sabrina, I think, is the most dangerous. Later on, by mid-game, Sabrina is the most dangerous gym leader. Not so much, not Koga, not Blaine or Giovanni, but Sabrina. Sabrina's the scariest with an Alakazam with Psychic typing. Psychic was very overpowered in uh, Gen 1 and even into Gen 2. Psychic was still very overpowered. So it was the original OP. So we jump into this uh, rival battle having no problem with Copper just, just mowing down a couple of his Pokemon. So we're doing Sylph first. We're going to fight our rival in Giovanni. Then we're going to go up against... Uh, I don't know if I show the Fighting Dojo or not, but I definitely am showcasing Sabrina. But yeah. Or maybe we did this and then we go back to fight Koga, but I'm pretty sure for once I did this out of order, which blasts for me, I know. But uh, yeah, I fight Sabrina instead of Koga. I fight out of order. So sad. And here comes the Alakazam. A level 35 Alakazam. I'm a little nervous, so I go for the Slash because it's almost always guaranteed to be a critical. And boom, that critical is more than enough physically defensive. Alakazam, not so much. And boom, critical hit Slash from a Charizard six levels higher. There goes the Alakazam. Now Blastoise is level 40. We have a level 41, only one level higher. We're hoping to survive whatever attack he throws at us. I assumed it would be a water type move. He goes for Withdrawal instead, which is going to do nothing to protect him from a Thunderbolt. And that Thunderbolt is just so OP. It kills Blastoise in one hit. I'm even surprised at that. I'm even surprised at that. So I'm like, all right, there we go. Blastoise is nothing to our Raichu. Fantastic. And then we beat our rival, and then we move on to fight Giovanni and self kill. And here's Giovanni. So Giovanni, of course, is still very easy at this point. I mean, at the end of the day, it's all ground types, you know, for the most part. In yellow, he's a little more difficult because he throws in that Persian to sort of screw you up and stuff, but he's got a Nidorino, which of course at this point is not a ground type, only a poison type, but I don't think that matters because Nido Boy jumps in here. We've taught him Earthquake. We learned we got Earthquake from, of course, Silphco. Nido Boy is here on the rise. There was a choice between uh, Rhyhorn and Nidoking to which one was going to get Earthquake. I decide to give it to Nido Boy instead. Throws in a Kangaskhan. And once again, in yellow version, it's a Persian. So I guess I guess both versions have their own way of doing things. And if I could have gotten a Kangaskhan in the Safari Zone, I don't even think I ran into one. But if I did, and if I caught one, I would use it. I would protect that like it was my fucking love child. Like. I've never really gotten a chance to not only I've never really used a Kangaskhan I think one time I used a Kangaskhan because I have a live dex guys I have a live dex most of them are level 100 a lot of them not all of them but a lot of them are level 100s up till like generation 6 I have a live dex I have all the Pokemon uh, and then of course uh, when it went to switch it fucked me over transferring my live dex so I just you know I don't really uh, continue after Gen 6 or 7 there, but uh, because the national best doesn't exist anymore, and that's well, that's bullshit. But anyways, not the point of the of this uh, red highlight run where we're just completely owning Giovanni and his Nido Queen. But uh, I've never gotten a chance to use a Kangaskhan truly in the game, like from start to finish or whatever. Or by the time I catch him, I don't use him uh, as much as I love Kangaskhan. I think he's just a really cool Pokemon, and no matter how good or bad he would be. If I manage to catch one in a Nuzlocke, I mean, it's no different than a Tauros or, I don't know, a Scyther or a Pinsir or something. Anything that you can, like, is really hard to catch. Safari Zone Pokemon, of course, being that, you know, that that guy, that, that, that thing, uh, I would absolutely 100% have used him. I would have ditched somebody on the team to use a Kangaskhan. And so, so we do actually showcase us doing the fighting dojo. We treat it like a gym, and we showcase the entire thing in this highlight reel. So we're showcasing defeating Mankeys and Matchops, and I'm pretty sure that nothing bad happens here. I'm pretty sure we're safe fighting up against uh, fighting up against all these guys. There's not really much of a, there's not much of an issue here. The 
and there we go. So we defeat the first. So we got four black belts to fight, and then we got the Karate King, the Karate Dojo Master, with his Hitmonchan and his Hitmonlee, which viable because I think they start at like level thirty something. Thirty. They're either level. I think they're in the high thirties. They're like thirty six, thirty seven, something like that. And uh, yeah, so but we we have level forties right now. There's no real danger here. And Caligon grows to level 42 fighting these guys. In jumps a Machoke. I mean, our Slash is doing more than enough. Of course, by this point, we still haven't learned a good Fire-type move. Flamethrower takes a while. You either have to raise up Charmander or Charmeleon, and then wait to evolve to Charizard, or you're waiting until the mid-40s at least to get Flamethrower. I think he learns it at like 47 or 49 or something. Or is it 46? Anyways, it's mid-40s before you learn Flamethrower. So, yeah. Yeah, and back then there was no Flame Wheel, there's no Fire Fang, there's no... None of these moves that you could, you know, just a step up from Ember. There's no mid-tier Fire move back then. There's the Weak Ember, and then there's Flamethrower, you know. And then Fire Spin happens, but whatever. So, our first shot is showcasing Heracles here. And he's going up against a Primeape. And you'd think, okay, why are you doing that? Why are you facing a Rock-type up against Fighting-type? I'm like, he's getting a Fighting fucking-type moves. Uh, a lot of the moves that were Normal-type were switched to Fighting by Gen 2 and 3, mostly in Gen 2. But at this point, there's no, there's no danger. There's no problem. So we're just, we're just winning. It's straightforward. I love it. I love showcasing... Highlighting like not me struggling because we started off this video losing our Raticate, losing Radagon, our only loss so far. Very, very annoying because it was my own stupidity, my own cockiness to lose him. So we start this off failing to catch a Snorlax and losing Radagon in the process. Not exactly a great way to start. So I like the fact that now showcasing the rest of it, we're actually just. I don't even need to be commenting on this. You guys are seeing this absolute slaughter that we are playing down on these guys. And Heracles is two levels away from becoming a massive Rhydon. And I'm so grateful that we caught Rhyhorn this early on because then I won't have to make up excuses as to why, to, to everybody, why I'm not turning him into a Rhyperion. You know? Uh, I can have my Rhydon, he can be a badass, he can be fully evolved badass for at least a couple of generations, Hope, hopefully, hopefully. Uh, he, he can stay that way until we hit Gen 4, if we make it that far. Just so you guys are clear, uh, as of the recording of this video, I'm only, uh, I've, I'm not to Gen 3 yet, I'm only on the second leg of our run. So, as, as of the recording of this highlight video, so I don't have that much f hockey future sight yet. I don't have that level of observation hockey yet. So, I don't really know what's going to go down later on. There's, so, it's still a bit of a mystery to me. I know how this run turns out, obviously, in the highlight reels. But uh, as far as the second run, not so much. I'm, I'm, I'm right in the thick of it, so... So we defeat the Karate Master with almost no issues, of course, though we are not eligible to take one of the fighting Pokemon. No gift Pokemon allowed, of course. And we use a couple of rare candies here that we've saved up to allow Rhyhorn, our Heracles, to evolve into the imposing and way better looking Sprite and Yellow version, Rhydon, who looks like such a boss and badass. Right there, he's looking a little chunky, a little chunky. But Rhydon is so cool. Rhydon is a beast. I love Rhydon. I've always loved Rhydon. I hate that we have Rhyperior as an option. I really do. It's like Lickitung is better than Licky Licky. Uh, you know, the only uh, the only real cool one that I like that Gen 4 did was Electivire. I think Electivire is a really cool addition to the Electkid line, the Electabuzz line. Though I still like Electabuzz. Um... Yeah, that, that there's some things I don't like. And it's not just me hating on Gen 4 either. Uh, I also d don't like some of the Gen 2 additions that they did. Uh, not really even the baby Pokemon, but some of the additions that are cool. But means that some of the other cool previous days uh, Pokemon don't happen anymore, right? 
Uh, so here we're fighting off against all the trainers. There's a lot of trainers here, so this is going to be a long one. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, when I when I dedicated the idea to, I'm going to showcase the entire gym run because of the gym leader clause that I put in. I put in a gym clause. You guys can check that out in the description if you haven't already. Uh, the reason I showed the entire run is because once I enter a gym, I can't leave. That's part of my Nuzlocke rules. Once you enter, the items and the Pokemon you bring with you, that's it. That's all you get. You can't just, okay, uh, you know, b battle a trainer, run back to the Pokemon Center. Battle a trainer, run back to the Pokemon Center. Nope. I don't allow that. So I showcase the entire run, just so if anybody's wondering, why are you going to, into a gym leader with like half your Pokemon half dead? This is the reason for that, right? So uh, this is just showcasing us battling all these trainers. And I believe there's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's seven trainers plus, plus Sabrina. So it's... It's a little bit of a trek here. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't think we lose anybody though. Spoiler alert, I don't think we lose anybody. I don't think if we do. Maybe, we'll, we'll, we'll pay a little bit of close attention here, but we certainly don't lose them early, early on. If it is, it's won by one of the later trainers or Sabrina herself. But I think we're pretty safe. I think we have some close calls, but I don't think we, I'm not 100% sure. I'm not 100 percent sure, um, but yeah. So going back to talking about Gen 2 and stuff, like for example, Caesar. Caesar's awesome. I love Caesar. But because of that, nobody uses his Scyther because you evolve your Pokemon right to their maximum potential, right? I think it would be fine. If they made Pokemon sort of like they've been doing nowadays where they have the Alolan variants and all the different variants That was sort of the option they should have went with a long time ago because as a result instead of boosting Scyther to be his Standalone like Pinsir, Standalone or Electabuzz or any of them, Jinx and stuff Be their standalone just one form, they're strong as in their own right Instead of doing that they've now made Scyther obsolete pretty much because why wouldn't you evolve them for the better stats, the typing, the move pool, everything. That that bugged me about Gen 2, that Gen 2 did that to a, to a couple of Pokemon. Uh, more so, Scyther's my best example, because Scyther, in my opinion, is a cooler, better design than Caesar. Caesar's still cool. Caesar's still badass. But Scyther's cooler. But now Scyther's irrelevant, and has remained that way. And it's not like Pinsir with a Mega, which you still use Pinsir. He's just got a Mega. Now, Caesar got a Mega. So, once again, it's it's just kind of annoying. Like, nobody nobody in their right mind is ever going to use a Rhydon again, an Electabuzz, a Scyther, and any of these, a Magmar, any of these Pokemon, because they, like, if they, I don't know if they have, but if they make an evolution of Lapras, nobody's going to use Lapras anymore either. That's, that bothers me. That bothers me because they already have great designs. It's not just because they're Kanto Pokemon or anything like that. I disagree with some of the changes they did that uh, in Gen 4, which when they did the same thing to certain other Pokemon. Uh, I'm trying to think of one. I'm trying to think of one. Because in Gen 4 they added, let's see, they added Frostlass. They added uh, Yanmega. Glee score, but see some of the, some of these were relevant. Like uh, Gligar wasn't really that great a Pokemon stat wise or ability wise or anything like that. And then we jump over to Glee score or, or Gly score and now made him a viable Pokemon for a lot of reason purposes. So taking mid tier, low tier, weaker Pokemon with good typing and good ideas and giving them an evolution state, great, fantastic. Giving, instead of boosting a existing already powerful Pokemon, they added, you know, Licky Licky and, you know, stuff like that. And it's just Magmortar and stuff. It's like, meh. You know. Oh, I knew what I wanted. I wanted Magmar, who's already an ugly duck built Pokemon. I wanted a fat. I wanted a dad bod Magmar. That's what I needed. I needed a dad bod Magmar. Yeah. So... Uh, so we actually pull out this pretty good. I haven't really been following the highlight reel as you guys can tell Because there's a lot of trainer battles to go through and it's gonna get boring quick. So there was my little discussion to sort of break up the mold uh, And I'll actually ask you guys what 
what evolutions, uh, baby Pokemon evolutions or something that was added after the Pokemon was introduced into a next generation, do you disagree with? That you don't like for whatever reason, whether you don't like the aesthetic, whether it was your favorite Pokemon and now they have an evolution and it made the previous one obsolete. Because once again, obsolete is the word I'm going to use here because no one, like, look, look at our beautiful ride, ride on here. Ride on, taking a lick. Digging right about long before levitate and boom super effective hitting ghosts all day every day um, But like nobody uh, keeps a war turtle as cool as war turtle Ivysaur and Charmeleon are Nobody keeps them at that stage everyone involves them, right? Everyone involves their three-stage Pokemon everybody involves them so as cool as Charmeleon is as cool Cool as War Turtle is, and I actually I think Ivysaur is my favorite out of, out of that line. But nobody keeps them because you're limiting yourself, especially in Nuzlocke territory. In challenges, Nuzlocke and competitive, you go for the highest stat. You you don't you don't limit yourself because that might be the difference between winning and losing. So my question to you guys is. What design or what Pokemon took away from one of your favorites? Or, or even not that, which one did you love that happened? Like the Gligar Gliscor thing. If you loved Gligar, but you're like, he's just not that good, he's just not that good, and boom, now you had the option of evolving him into a powerhouse Pokemon. Now you're like, yes, I'm so glad that they added that to make this Pokemon viable. You know? Which, which of each, whatever way of the spectrum you're on, let me know down in the comment section down below. I'm, I'm curious to hear what other people's opinions are on that one. As we continue to kick the shit out of all these Chandlers and stuff like that of, uh, which, by the way, we've fought in mostly, uh, ghost poisons and, uh, water types here. Just, just so we're clear. Fought in a lot of Slowbros, Slowpokes, uh, Haunters and Ghastlies. There's no Drowsies, there's no Hypnos, which I'll bring up later, but the funny thing is, Drowsy and Hypno are Psychic types. They're in Koga's Poison Gym. Just because they learn Poison Gas. That's literally the only reason. They are not Poison types. Meanwhile, the actual Poison types, which are Haunter, Ghastly, and Gengar, are in Sabrina's Psychic Gym, with no Psychic moves, and with zero Psychic moves and Psychic typing. But the psychic types are in the other one, so we're, we're just work that one out. Work that one out for me. Like the Koga, the, the Koga Sabrina thing is sort of weird to me. Um, either way, yeah, force of habit. We end up saving before every gym leader. We always have. Uh, but then it's funny. That's a bad editing cut by me because I did that. I just I saved for the sake of saving. And then I went back and came back in so that the edit would look flawless, like that I, so we didn't see the save. But I end up not cutting it anyway, so my poor editing skills just not paying enough attention. Uh, so I did what I did there was relevant. But yeah, so we're finally up against Sabrina. We're fighting Sabrina. We get Kadabra right out of the gate. We're going for our critical hitting slash by our strongest Pokemon right now, which is Ankelagon. Uh, at level 42, he's got, you know, 5-6 levels on Sabrina's Pokemon. Manages a critical hit on the Kadabra and kills him. Though, the Mr. Mime does survive a critical hit slash. Uh, twice. And, uh, we get double slash because of, you know. It is what it is. Then we go for an Ember here, just to change up the mold. Boom. And now we're into a Venomoth, which I believe, do we go for the Slash or the Ember? We go for the Ember for the super effective hit, but it doesn't even do quite half. Though we do get the burn, though as a result, we get poison. Now granted, there's no guarantee that Slash with a critical hit would have killed Venomoth in one hit. I kind of doubt it. I think it would have been left with about, you know, into the red or into the low yellow. But here's where the dangerous thing comes into play. Is this goddamn level 43 Alakazam. It's a level higher than I am. I go for the slash. The critical hit does so much damage. Now, goes for the reflect. Fantastic, we hit the slash. There's no danger. 
Like, a Psychic Blast was going to be my biggest worry, but this thing never even goes for a Psybeam or a Psychic, and we defeat Sabrina. But once again, it all depends on what Sabrina's Alakazam decides to do. Psychic takes out about three to four, about a half or better of my team in one shot. No crit, one shot, takes out the team. So, it was very scary jumping into there, so I took the one with the, with the highest chance of surviving that I felt. Um... And then after that, we jump right into the Koga battle. We go straight into the Future City gym after defeating Sabrina. I don't think we raised up anybody. I think we're still the same levels. Let's see. And once again, what, what was I talking about? Jugglers are in here with Drowsy and shit like that. So, yeah, Apollo's in here at level 38. Still not quite up to the level 40s. And see that? That poison gas? That's... As far as I'm concerned, that's the only reason, that's the only reason that, um, that, and, and a Kadabra. What the hell? A Drowsy and a Kadabra. Jugglers should be in Sabrina's gym and the Chandlers should be in Koga's gym. Straight up. Straight up. So Apollo does his thing, but unfortunately he does get poisoned, so we can't really use him any longer, even though we really want to raise him up. We also have our Doug Trio, who's fallen behind considerably. He's only level 33 and stuff at this point by the looks of that status screen. Um, but of course, we've entered the gym. We cannot leave. So, and we save our antidotes for when we actually really need them. So if we don't need them, we're not going to heal up uh, Apollo. So now, this juggler comes in a level 38 Hypno. Probably should have fought that instead of a Ghastly or a Haunter, but whatever. Uh, in Sabrina's Gem. We go for the Slash. That crit still only did just over half. So, this guy was scary. Thankfully, he went for the Headbutt and not like a Psybeam or something. I don't know if he knows Psychic at that point. But if he knows Psybeam, Psybeam would have done quite a bit more damage to Ann Caligon. Might have even brought him below 100... Uh, uh, 100 health. So now we fight the third trainer in Koga's Gym. Koga's Gym goes a little quicker, I believe, uh, than Sabrina's Gym with all the teleporters. But we just, it seems like we're back in Sabrina's Gym, doesn't it? We're fighting Psychic types. We have literally not fight, fought a Poison type yet. We've only fought Psychic types. Koga and Sabrina need to, I, I feel like those two were fighting like, because technically in the anime and then later on in yellow version, Koga has the Venomoth and uh, Sabrina doesn't have a Venomoth. So my, uh, my understanding of that is that I think that they got pissed. I think that Sabrina took, beat Koga and took his Venomoth saying it's a psychic type or whatever and then I'm going to take it. And he's bitter about it. So he filled his gym with psychic type trainers. Or something. I feel like there's a feud going on between Sabrina and Koga right now because they're just so intertwined. It's like, oh, I'm gonna fill my gym with a bunch of jugglers that use Drowsy and Hypnos, and you can't use them, and Cadavers and stuff. And she's like, well, well, then I'm gonna fill mine with ghost type, ghost poison types. It's like, they don't even have psychic moves. Don't care. Don't care, Koga. Like, and so I, I feel like there's a feud. Is there a lover spat between Sabrina and Koga? Yeah, I would buy that. Koga and Sabrina were husband and wife, and they're divorced, and the the, the divorce settlement, instead of uh, being involved with kids, is being involved with which trainers and Pokemon get to go to which gym, and they're just so bitter, the lawyers are still fighting it out. And finally, we fight a poison type. We fight a poison type Pokemon, finally in this gym. So Nido Boy comes into play, poison resistance, which is fantastic. Uh, and then a random ground type. So we finally fight Narbok. It's like, finally, a poison type earthquake. And then we run into a fucking sand slash. Like, like, we got surf and stuff, so it doesn't matter. But still, I'm sitting there like, what? What? You know? But he has a second Arbok, so it's, so it's all good. It's fine, it's fine. But at least we finally, like, like where's the Grimers? Where's the coughings? Where's the ghastlies? Where's the actual poison types? Where's the nit where's the nitarinas and the nitar and the nitarinos? Where's the actual poison where's the Golbats and the Zubats? Like there are so many poison type Pokemon 
And it's a bunch of... Look, another drowsy! Filled with psychic types. Filled with psychic types in this goddamn gym. I haven't seen an Ekans yet. I saw two Arbox. Now, technically, I'm taking a bit of a risk here because these things, even though I'm about, you know, 8 to 10 levels higher, I am sub susceptible to psychic attacks. But this fucking thing chooses to use poison gas anyways, instead of using psychic or psybeam at level 34 probably only has confusion or psybeam. Still, that would like probably half Nido King's HP, right? Like, it's super effective hit, it's from a hypno, they're powerful. So I take a big risk there, uh, and then I switch over to copper to go up and fight this trainer. Once again, I don't think I made a rule about you have to fight every trainer in the gym. It's just really good experience to fight the gym trainers, right? Uh, so I'm not doing a whole lot of grinding, which I end up doing anyways. Uh, as far as I know, uh, in almost each game, you basically have to grind before any attempt on the Elite Four. Sometimes even between gyms, you got to do a little bit of grinding because uh, you're just under leveled. You're just under leveled, right? Like we're in our 40s right now, but Blaine has, I think, a level 50. And Giovanni's got 50s. I'm pretty sure. Well, that being said, I might be thinking about yellow version, because in yellow version... And of course, for the first time I bring out copper, not only do we get poisoned, but we're up against a goddamn sand slash, so I can't use my thunderbolt, and I've got to go with swift instead of switching out. So, we... Uh, like, what a pain in the ass. Then we get an Arbok, so we manage to kill the Arbok with the Thunderbolt. But now we have two of our uh, six Pokemon poisoned in this gym. We might end up using an Antidote in the end if we really want to use uh, Copper to take care of Koga. But I think we've got other options for Koga. Remember, there's no abilities, there's no Levitate, there's no crap. And now, here we go, we're up against Koga. And we start off with Rhydon, our Heracles. Let's go. Heracles is our man of justice, our god of valor and justice. He is going to bring us victory. 100%. 100%. So let's, let's see what happens. So finally a coughing. Once again, the only poison types in the whole gym were Arbox. There was three Arbox. All the other gym Pokemon were not poison types. Work that one out. Just because Sandslash has poison sting and Drowsy has poison gas. They're all of a sudden poison. Weird. And then, best sprite of muck in all Core Series games. I don't care that it's gone 3D and shit. That muck looks absolutely awesome, devastating, and terrifying. Died in one hit to our powerful ass ride on level 43, Dig. Once again, back then, I think Dig has changed a lot over the years. I think it became like 80, 100 by Gen 3. But back then, this was just a two step earthquake. It was 100, 100. So it's just as powerful as Earthquake. It's just a two turn earthquake. So, that's why it wasn't a hard decision for me to say, okay, which does Needle Boy or Heracles get Earthquake? Because the other one was going to get Dig, and it's just as good. There's no downside. Other than the two-step two turn. Weezing, once again, same idea. We defeat Koga without issue. Like, but where are the Weezings and the Ekans and the Mucks and the Grimers? There's not a single Grimer in this gym. Not a single Golbat. What? You know? Like, Agatha, who's the Ghost-type trainer, has more. And now we're in the Seafoam Islands. Oh! Oh, I completely forgot about this. Okay, so this is epic. This is epic, right? What did I tell you guys before? We have this lineup, right? And we have a huge weakness to water types. And I was trying to find good water types, blah, blah, blah. This is my, basically, I think my last stop. I don't think I catch anything else for the rest of the game. I've already been to Pokemon Mansion, failed to catch anything or what have you. I think I ran into, like, two Rattatats or something like that. Um, so... We go into Seafoam Islands. We, we're not there to fight Articuno or whatever. We're just there to, to catch something, right? What do we run into? I'm thinking we're going to find like a seal or something like that. No, we find a level 38 gold. I think this is a 1% chance encounter. So it's super crazy. Level 38. So it's, it doesn't, it's not like level 26 or something. Something we got to raise up. I've got Ultra Balls here at the ready. We attack this thing with Ember because I'm so scared of uh, killing this thing, but I get too greedy with the Embers and the thing is burned. So I have limited chances to catch this goddamn Golduck. Level 38. 
but boom, do we catch it? Yes, we do. We get ourselves a level 38 Golduck. I've almost, I don't think I've ever used a Golduck before in a Nuzlocke. That's for sure never in a Nuzlocke, but in general, boom. We call this thing Wild Wing after the Anaheim Mighty Ducks. Actually, the cartoon, not so much the actual Anaheim Ducks, uh, Mighty Ducks from uh, from the NHL, but the, the cartoon spinoff of the Anaheim Mighty Ducks, right? Wild Wing, not, not named after the mascot, but named after the goalie Wild Wing uh, from the cartoon. Uh, and it, that, that is just so epic to me. So we're already into Blaine's gym after that, right? So we didn't, we didn't catch anything, so I was right. We didn't catch anything at the Pokemon Mansion. We didn't get anything uh, uh, north to Palatown, anything like that. But what we did get was a goddamn great, great addition to this damn team. A fantastic addition. I was so happy to uh, get ourselves a gold up. I was like, it's perfect. I don't need to choose between raising up a Krabby or raising up a Tentacool or raising up a Staryu. I have a ready-made level 38, two, two levels away from 40. We're only in the low 40s right now. As you can see, Apollo's level 43 and stuff like that. And I think during the Pokemon Mansion run, we ran around with Golduck and stuff. So I'm pretty sure Golduck's like level 45 by this point. So everyone's already in the 40s. You know, we're good to go. We are great. And... It's just fantastic. So, uh, we don't do the quiz thing. We want all the trainer experience that we can get because we know we have to fight level, you know, mid-50s soon. And we're only in the mid-40s. We need 10 levels after beating Blaine and then Giovanni. We have only these two gyms and Victory Road. We'll probably get most of the Pokemon, I would argue, to about... If, if right now, if all our Pokemon are, let's say, level... 44, right? There's probably enough experience between this gym, Giovanni's gym, Giovanni, the rival battle, and then Victory Road to get everyone to maybe level 50. That doesn't seem... It seems like, whoa, 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 there's so much experience out there. It's like, uh, but is there? Is there really? I don't know. I think that gets everyone to maybe 50, 51, but not 54, 55. I think they're still grinding by the end. Uh, once again, we're not going to showcase any of the highlighted grinding, but uh, I think there was. I think there was some rare candy usage. We used up all of our candies, and yeah. So spoiler alert, we do not lose uh, uh, before we get to Victory Road. We do not lose before we get to Victory Road. Um, and yeah, so Apollo's doing his thing. But I mean, look at this. We're killing trainer after trainer with Apollo. We've gained one level. That's three, because uh, he was at level 43. He's gained only one level after fighting three trainers in a row. Now his fourth one. This is my point. It seems like there's plenty of experience, plenty of trainers. Not really when you're trying to raise up six Pokemon, 10 more levels. Because we want them all to be at least in the mid 50s. From 53 to 56 at least, before we attack the Elite Four. Because we're not going to get enough experience. we got to fight level 60s. So by the end of it, so we are going to be a little slightly under leveled by the time we reach uh, Lance and the champion. So I have no qualms about starting off being Lorelai's level. I have no problem uh, hedging my bets if that's what you want to call that. And another mega punch to send Vulpix on his way. And out comes a Growlithe. Once again, that's four. I know they're only in the mid-30s, and I know they're lower-level Pokemon, but still, we beat a couple of Ninetales as well. And we still haven't gained another level. So there's my point. A gym is going to give you one to two levels at best, by the looks of it. So now we switch out to Nido Boy. Yeah, so they're all in the mid-40s right now. Which is really good. So now we're going to fight another gym trainer. Once again, uh, Giovanni's gym is going to be like Sabrina's. It's going to be a little long, so I'm sorry about that. But I actually, I think that we end this on the defeat of Blaine. I'm pretty sure that this has been was between Sabrina and Koga's gym and stuff. I think, because we're trying to make these at, uh, like relatively around an hour or under an hour. So I think the, there's a third part video for this. 
I don't think we do the whole run right here. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense. So what's our run time right now? Yeah, we're at 51 minutes right now of run time. Of recording time anyway. So by the time this is all said and done, it's, yeah, it's going to be, yeah. So yeah, now a level 41 rap dash is going to give us a lot of experience. But once again, Apollo went and killed like four or five trainers in this gym. That's half the trainers at least. And he got one level. One and a half, really, but still one level. And now Needleboy's been in here. You know, he just beat a Rapidash, but it was the only Pokemon on the trainer's team. So good experience, but this guy's got two. And it's a Vulpix, let me guess, 30s? Yeah. Needleboy might gain a level. And Blaine is gonna, if somebody sweeps Blaine, Blaine's gonna give whatever Pokemon sweeps Blaine a level, whether it's Rhydon, Golduck, uh, or Wildwing, I should say, Needleboy, one of them. And now a Surf on a Growlithe. But once again, these weaker Pokemon are only giving like five, six hundred experience, not over a thousand like the Ninetales and the Rapidash. See, seven hundred, you know, it's, it's just not enough. So there's another trainer gone with no levels, so. And this, I think this is the final trainer. Fire is weak to H2O. Really? I didn't know. I've been using Earthquake this whole time. Another Growlithe. Alrighty. Let's see what we can manage here. And this is funny, guys, because I had to re-record this, actually. Uh, just here at the tail end, because, yeah, I, I think we are coming up to the end. I actually had to re-record this. I recorded this, but OBS, which is what I use, uh... It updated, erased all my stuff, and so all my layouts, all my, you know, video captures, all this stuff, right? All my graphics, everything. Had to remake everything, pretty much. Uh, you know, been taking a while. I only have a couple set up so far. And then, didn't even check the rendering side of things. It changed the rendering format to uh, MKV, which I can't use. I can't upload to YouTube. I can't use. So... Yeah. So I'm re-recording this, uh, actually. Um, this is about a week later since my initial recording. I recorded this, the first one, and the second one. Uh, I recorded the first one, then updated, and then the following day I recorded, and then I was so disappointed by losing an hour. And actually I recorded part three as well back then. Uh, so that was a week and a half ago or so, and yeah, it was really bad. But yeah, look at our Wild Wing here. Wild Wing already gained a level, so he's right shy of getting to the next level, but yeah. So we're beating up Blaine here, it's gonna be a joke, but yeah, so I had to re-record all this, uh, here today, next weekend. I think it's been about ten days, yeah. I was so disappointed by losing, uh, parts two and three, uh... And, yeah, I was, I was so fucking disappointed. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I was so mad. Uh, just because of a stupid update, it changed my uh, rendering format to MKV instead of MP4 for YouTube usage. Uh, it got rid of my game captures, it got rid of my scenes, it got rid of everything. Just because I updated. And I'm like, that's never happened before, I've updated this thing many, many times. This is what it is. But Wildwing did gain one level from Blaine, even though it was right out of the gate, so already close. And there we go, so we did beat Blaine. So, isn't that fantastic? We did, we did actually defeat Blaine. So, uh, that's the end of that though. Uh, as you guys can tell, the video paused and everything. So we got, uh, gym badges 5, 6, and 7. We also caught our, our, the stellar lineup of a team. Like, that gold out capture, I don't think I gave that enough praise. Amazing. Super hype about getting the Golduck. Uh, getting the Rhyhorn was really cool too and stuff like that in the Nid Arena from the Safari Zone. Safari Zone is sort of a hit and miss thing, but finding a 1%, okay? I, like, I'm pretty sure a level 38 Golduck in Seafoam Islands in Pokemon Red is like a 1% capture. If not, it's like a 4% capture or something like that. The chances of running into that as your first run and then capturing it. Like, goddamn, like, as I said, I needed something against water weakness. I needed a water type. Just because I had Surf on Nidoking didn't mean that I didn't need an actual water type. Something viable, you know what I mean? 
so it was it was probably going to end up being vile plume. Like I hadn't evolved gloom yet. Uh, our our Mary Jane, uh, if you guys remember Mary Jane, there I didn't end up using uh, Mary Jane as much as I wanted to, and then I was waiting to get all the moves from from gloom, and then you know things started to get it pushed, 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 and then boom, what happens? You find a gold duck who's only like three levels lower than our current roster team. So it took like a little bit of grinding in Pokemon Mansion and boom, we had we had a viable Pokemon just right out of the gate with a great move set. As you guys could see, a great move set. Confusion, Ice Beam, Body Slam, and Surf. Like it's already perfect. It's already a perfect set. So I have no issues here. None none whatsoever. We already have this monster, this absolute monstrosity of a great Pokemon. So uh, I think this lineup looks fantastic. And if I remember correctly, I don't think we change it for the rest of the run. So uh, I don't know if we show any more captures, if we captured anything after this, but I'm pretty sure this is the run we go for for the rest of the game, win or lose. So either way, uh, that's our... So that's the video, pretty much. That's that's part two and stuff like that. Yeah, but either way, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe and stuff. And I'm sorry if this one was a little more haphazard, but I'm still recovering from the fact that I lost like two hours worth of footage because of the OBS fuckery, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, so I re-recorded this and tried to be as funny and stuff. I feel like my first video was better. And I tried to use MKV converters and all that stuff. It just... None of it worked. It, it just didn't work out. The sound quality was terrible and all this fun jazz. So I just said, fuck it. And I decided to re-record the highlight reel. Um, so it's not like I did a live anyway sort of idea. But I hadn't watched it in a while. So it was sort of more exciting and on the edge of your seat stuff. Now I'm basically just going over what I just went over a week and a half ago. So, um, But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the, this part two. Uh, and once again, there's one more video obviously out. Uh, gonna come out because we have one more gym leader one more rival battle and then the elite four So we have three more things probably gonna be the shortest of the three videos and then uh, assuming that everything goes right We'll be on to the second leg of the video which will uh, or the second leg of the genlock challenge Which we decided to opt for a gold version uh, We thought I thought about crystal a little bit there, but I already had the gold ROM So I didn't need to download anything and I've already played silver on this channel, but I never played gold so, I just decided, you know what, we already have gold on here, it'll cover another base uh, sort of idea, and if we ever decide to just do a Nuzlocke of Gen 2 ever again on the channel, we have Crystal as a, another option. So, anyways, uh, that's it for me guys, hope you guys enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe as always, and we'll see you Pokemon Trainers, back here once again, part 3, the final part of the red leg of our Gen Lock Challenge. Looking forward to it. Hope you guys are too. And let me know what I can do different, better, or worse. All, all the above uh, in the comment section down below. So thanks guys so much for watching. Bye-bye. Sayonara.